G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, you would have seen I've been doing a few videos on this old Sherline lathe lately. And I've had a bit of a read up on the internet to see what I can find out about them. And there's not a lot of literature on them, really. And not these old ones with this basic layout. And a lot of people in forums have been, you know, whinging about, oh, the tail stock, you can't get it accurate. And it's, uh, you know, there's no adjustment. And just can't get a decent, you know, job out of it. And i got to say, initially, I thought the same thing. I thought, wow, this tail stock's really bad. Like, it was about point, uh, zero 0.03 mil out over um, this sort of length, you know, which was terrible. And uh, there was a bit of slop in the quill, uh, in the actual barrel you know, of the quill, not the, not the taper. And I was thinking, uh, you know, it's just wear and, and when you look at these, I mean, on the, uh, the tail stock there's, there's two bolts, you know, and you think, well this one, this bolt here tightens up on the quill, which it uh, you know, would on most lathes, and this one locks the, the tail stock in position, which, you know, you would think would be the case as well. But no, there's a trick to this. And <laughs> it took me a little while to figure it out. And I'm sure a lot of people who've got these still haven't figured it out. I'll show you what the trick is. All right, these two bolts here. Now I looked uh, at a schematic of the lathe, you know, parts list to see what they said about these bolts. Didn't say anything, they, they just said they're bolts, you know. No information whatsoever. And I hunted around to see if I could find a user manual on this. Well, there is a user manual for the American made one, which has got a separate gib strip on it. Uh, but that's not this one, you see. This one doesn't have a separate gib strip. This is, this is all one bit. So, you know, you're left to your own devices. And you know, I was thinking, well, how can I get this thing accurate? But then I finally worked it out. Now, what happens is, to adjust this up accurately, what you do is you loosen this bolt off here completely. And this bolt here, you tighten it up so that the tail stop will just slide up and down on the waves without binding. Just slide up and down, you know. And that's it, you leave it. That's, that's the critical thing. Then when you use this, you slide it up to your job, get it in position, and you tighten this bolt up here, and that actually locks the tail stock in position, and it takes out any slop in the tail stock quill. It doesn't actually lock the quill as such, but it takes out any slop. Bingo. I did that. I machined up this bit of this bit of steel, which was previously getting a, a run out of 0 0.03 millimetre from there to there, and it was damn near 100% perfect. It was 0 0.001 millimetre out over that distance, which is not too bad. So there you go, that's the trick. So anybody who's got one of these little lays and is cursed and the tail stop, that's the trick. Haven't seen it written down anywhere or seen a video on it or anything. And incidentally, this this uh, life centre that I've machined down from a Morse 1 to a Morse 0 is absolutely perfect. This thing is spot on. Solved the, uh, the uh, travel problem completely as far as clearing the, the saddle and the top and the cross slide. Great. So anyway, that's it from me. So, yeah, you know, you look at this and you think, Jesus, you know, how didn't I think of that originally? But of course, that layout is confusing. But that's the trick to getting these things accurate. Okay, I hope that helps somebody. And uh, that's it from me. See you next time. Cheers.